And now it's time for another Board Game Brawl Top 10 with Nick Meanahan, sponsored by BoardGameBliss.com. Hey now folks, my name is Nick, this is Board Game Brawl, and it is time yet again for my Top 10 Deck Building Games. I did this list once before, a year ago, well, perhaps over a year ago at this point, and it proved to be way more popular than I ever could have imagined. Apparently people were clamoring for a list like this one. And really, even if it wasn't that popular, I still would do iterative versions of this list because I love deck building games. I really do, and I want to share and highlight the ones that I think are stellar and rise above the rest. It's my favorite mechanism or genre of game. If you're not familiar with deck building as a concept, I don't necessarily mean uh, building a deck ahead of time. There's a lot of games that do that, like Magic the Gathering and Netrunner and all these other LCGs, where before you sit down to play the game, you build the deck. What I'm talking about are games where building the deck is the game. You start off with, um, this is just a broad generalization, but you start off with an inferior set of cards. All the other players usually have close to or the exact same set of cards, but then during the course of the game, you buy better cards, put them into your discard pile, and eventually you reshuffle your deck, and now you're going to have access eventually to those newer and better cards, and then you use those to do, well, many things, depending on the game. Get victory point cards, um, battle objectives, battle each other, things like that. It just It's an engine building mechanism that works really, really well, and I love it. And when it's done particularly well, it's these are the types of games that rise above the rest, and they're some of my favorite games if you look at my top 100 games list. Now, one of the biggest complaints I get about my top 10s is that I, my intro is too long, so I'm going to cut it off here, but... If you come back at the end of the video after I give you my number one for this year, I will go over the top 10 from last year and see where things changed, what fell off, what is new to the list, or just which ones moved around uh, drastically. So without further ado, let's get to my top 10 deck building games uh, circa 2015. <laughs> My number 10 is Trains from AEG. Now this fell a bit on my list, but it's still hanging in there, and for good reason. It's a fantastic game. This takes Dominion-style deck building, which is to say there is a static lot of cards that players are purchasing from, but then you add a board, which in this case the theme is that you are building train tracks and uh, stations and trying to connect them together and maximize your points that way, while still also going for point cards like you would in Dominion, but this time they're represented by skyscrapers and uh, apartment buildings and things like that. So it's got a really neat theme, which I think comes out pretty strongly through the game mechanisms. The Rising Sun expansion came out between uh, this year's list and last year's list, which really did enhance the game, not quite as much as I wanted to. I didn't like some of the cards that were in that set, but still kept it alive. There's also lots of extra boards as well. So solid theme, solid mechanisms, just a fun deck builder altogether. That is Trains from AEG, my number 10. My number nine is new to the list this year. It is Xenoshift from Cool Mini or Not. This is like aliens and starship troopers in a box with really neat and innovative deck building mechanisms. You still do the same kind of things you do in other deck building games. You're buying cards to put into your discard pile. In this case, those cards are either new and advanced troops or equipment to put onto those troops. And this like futuristic setting where you're, uh, you're these mining corporations whose uh, bases on alien planets are beset by these uh, crystal infused monsters, things like that. So, But you still do the same kind of deck building, but in this case, it is fully cooperative. And, and when I say that, I really mean cooperative because you can buy cards and put them into other players' decks. You can give them the cards, then when they use them to help them survive a new onslaught of enemies, they'll go into their deck. They are now their cards, which is a really, really cool thing. So I love the theme. The artwork is amazing and brutal. Um, it's just a solid game all around. That is Xeno Shift from Cool Mini or Not my number nine. My number eight is also new to the list, but definitely not new to my collection. In fact, last year I mentioned it as a footnote of a game that I left off the list just because I thought that other games did much better than it, but I've kind of come around on it. I'm actually going to say that this is a catch-all category for the Cerberus game engine from Cryptozoic Entertainment, but if I have to pick one game, I'm going to say the DC Comics deck building game. There's also the Naruto deck building game and the Street Fighter deck building game that are still in my collection, and I actually think those are better games as far as the mechanisms, but there are so many expansions for DC Comics deck builder at this point, along with the fact that I just enjoy that, those 
themes much, much better than the other two, that I'm going to have to elevate DC Comics. And look, part of the reason I left it off last time is because I thought, ah, it's kind of a basic deck builder. Other ones do it better. But really, with the amount of options that you have, and the fact that I can always, without fail, get this one to the table with new players that come in because of the theme, pasted on though it might be, of playing as these different superheroes or now supervillains and trying to uh, you know get these different cards representing sidekicks and powers and all these different things. And it's just so smooth and easy to understand and easy to grasp. And it really is an introductory deck builder that works very, very well. And with a lot of the new expansions that have come out, it has added a lot more strategic strategic depth to the game, especially when you start mixing them together. So again, any of the Cerberus deck builders would probably fit into this category, but I think DC Comics is the one that I like the most. That is the DC Comics deck building game from Cryptozoic Entertainment, my number eight deck builder of all time. My number seven fell quite a bit from last year's list, but it's still hanging in there because it is still a good game. That is Ascension from Stoneblade Entertainment. Now, in the wake of Dominion, when there was just this flood of deck building deck building games coming onto the market, trying to capitalize on that popularity, people were looking for innovation in that system. And I think that Ascension was one of the first major games to do that, to the point where a lot of games are coming out now, including the one that just came before this that I mentioned, the DC Comics deck building game, emulate Ascension much more than Dominion with its uh, different types of currency. Uh, DC Comics doesn't have that, but other ones do. And also the ever-changing lane of cards. Um, and the, the, the theme is cool as well where you're fighting monsters and you're getting heroes to come into your deck and help you fight the monsters. And as a matter of fact, one of the things I always bagged on Ascension for was terrible, terrible artwork. And that certainly was true for a long time. But the last few sets have completely done a 180. I mean, I actually love the artwork. It actually is good, not just even okay. And they've also added a lot of really cool innovations like the treasure the crystal shards that you can use to get a new type of currency a third type energy as well as uh, now the last set had heroes that you play as like you are the avatar that gets special abilities and so i actually think that you should just start with rise of vigil and work your way up from there ignore the early sets altogether and also you know the app is very very well done for this game so a lot to love here with ascension despite the fact that it fell quite a bit on my list but it's still solid that is ascension whatever set you want to go for past Rise of Vigil from Stoneblade Entertainment, my number seven. My number six actually rose on my list from last year, and that is High Command, either War Machine or Hordes. I still believe that I'm like an island in the board game reviewing community. Like, no one else is really talking about this that much. No one else seems to like it that much. I have been criticized for liking the game as much as I do, but I love the theme. I love the War Machine Hordes or War Ma Hordes universe. I love the uh, interesting, innovative things that this game does as far as having your own personal deck of cards that you buy from in order to pad out your deck. And you can actually do some pre deck building in this game where you can construct your buy pile before you even start the game if you really want to get that deep into it and then fighting for control of the locations means there's tons more interaction than most deck builders have yes the game has some problems it's not colorblind friendly it has tiny text uh and colored text that you know, there's no really work around all. i think they've kind of fixed that though recently and actually one of the things that one of the main problems that people have with the game was uh the deployment cost aspect and there's actually a variant someone introduced where you just ignore that altogether that i have not tried yet but i am really eager to do so that could like really open up this game so but even with the rules as are as they are it's a solid solid game that i wish more people were paying attention to there's certainly been a lot of expansions for those of us who are the true believers that is war machine or hordes high command from privateer press my number six deck building game my number five fell just a little bit from last year, but it's still a wonderful game, and I still proudly have it all on my shelf behind me for people to ogle as they watch my videos, and that is Tonto Quarry from Japan Anime Games in North America and Arclight Overseas. This is a deck building game in the Dominion style format where you have a set lot of cards that you purchase from, but to me, even though the base mechanisms are almost exactly the same as Dominion, there's so many little innovations that the game does, especially from set to set. Like in the first game, you have like attack cards and maids that you put into other people's that you either injure their mage or you put uh, bad maids into their deck or uh, in the second set where you actually buy structures that will modify the game for you or in the third set which is my favorite where uh, the romantic vacation set where you can actually get these reminisce cards which are like achievements that you have to go for when you can get a certain type of an amount of cards in your hand there's just a lot of really cool things like that and yeah the, the one thing people talk about the most in the game is the fact that you are buying maids in order to uh, put into your mansion and who knows what happens after that but really 
it the theme is not as bad as everyone makes it out to be if you just sat down and played it and looked at the art the art's not scandalous or racy or anything like that it's just a fun theme especially if you're actually into anime and the fact of the matter is there's a really really good game to back it up and this game is part of the reason why dominion does not make it on my list because this does what dominion does just a little bit better that is tonso quarry any set you want from japan anime games my number five deck building game my number four is new to the list, and it skyrocketed up pretty far, as you can tell. That is Paperback from designer and self-publisher Tim Fowers. Boy, this game has gotten quite a lot of buzz in the last year, although it still, I don't think, has hit immense popularity, but that's only because of availability. Once this game really gets out there, people are just going to glom onto it. It's an amazing deck builder that mixes Scrabble with Dominion, which sounds like it wouldn't work. I actually hate Scrabble, even though I think I have a decent vocabulary and I like English and things like that, but I just, it's just never worked for me. But those two things together, for some reason, just come together so well. It is a very puzzly, brain-burning game of getting this hand of cards with all these different letters, and sometimes you get like double letters. Those are the, the better cards that you want to eventually buy, and stringing them together into the biggest, most complicated word that you can in order to get more currency and buy you know point cards and which, which represent like novel covers and stuff like that and there's different game modes there's a cooperative mode you're competing over these like achievement word and letter cards it's just so so neat it's definitely one you don't want to play with people who are prone to analysis paralysis but despite that it just works with so many groups it's a great gateway deck building game because who does not love a theme like that people might not like fantasy and science fiction but they're going to want to play a word game everybody loves those so that is paperback from tim fowers easily my number four deck building game my number three was actually the ruler of last year's list. It fell just a little bit, as you can tell. That is Thunderstone Advance from AEG. Now, Thunderstone is just an amazing, the very, very thematic game where you're trying to lead a team of adventurers down into a dungeon fighting monsters in order to get victory points but in order to do that you need to get all these different adventurer cards that you can actually level up which is such a cool concept and whenever any other game does that i think about thunderstone because i feel like they really innovated that especially in the uh in terms of deck building and then you buy different items to equip them with and weapons and magical spells to equip them with epic thunderstone was a game uh, a version of the game i hadn't played uh, before I did last year's list, and I've played it since then, and I think it's the only way I'm ever going to play from now on, where you basically just mix everything up together. But either way you want to play it, it's a solid, solid game. I'll talk more about this at the end, but the only reason it fell is just because it's kind of hard to get to the table and it's very long. But despite that, it's still a solid game that I would recommend to anyone who loves fantasy games and deck building games. That is Thunderstone Advance. Don't bother with any of the old Thunderstone stuff. Just Advance. My number three deck building game. My number two actually rose on the list from last year, and that is Legendary, a Marvel deck building game from Upper Deck Entertainment. Now, this is another one, just like the DC Comics uh, entry on the list, where I can kind of do it as a catch-all with other games, because you have Legendary Encounters Alien and Legendary Encounters Predator, and Big Trouble in Little China is on the way, and Firefly, all these different things. And they all use basically the same core system it just comes down to what theme you like the most and for me i love all of those games i love predator i love alien but the marvel theme really sings to me and also uh there's so many expansions for marvel legendary at this point that just really pat out the game and make it amazing with the amount of variety so i have to go with that one as my personal favorite and oh, man this game has just blown wide open since i did the last the list last year the secret wars expansion which is huge and has so much content you've got even these smaller expansions which all add a lot of new and cool stuff to the game a lot of people bagged even on the fear itself expansion but i loved it i thought it was fantastic i gave some crap to the villains expansion because i didn't think it innovative and innovated in a lot of different ways but you know what now i just mix it all together anyway so it doesn't matter this game is amazing it's semi-cooperative i wish it was fully cooperative but even as that you're fighting a mastermind there's these villains coming into the city you take control of the marvel heroes and villains teaming up together to take out all these different characters and villains and henchmen Oh, I could go on and on. There's so much cool stuff in this game. It's a thematic deck builder, which you don't see a lot of, admittedly, even if it is my favorite genre. It's got interesting and cool mechanisms. The setup and takedown is a bear, but if you can get past that, there's so much game here, and it's just a wonderful experience. Marvel Legendary, a deck building game, or however you want to pronounce it, from Upper Deck Entertainment. Easily my number two deck building game. 
My number one deck building game is also the game that rose highest on the list from last year, and that is Heart of Crown. Currently from a the Japanese company called Flip Flops, but will be being released by Japanime Games hopefully soon. Hopefully there will be a Kickstarter before the end of the year with a, probably a release of next year. So you guys keep quit bugging me about when this game is actually going to be available. There is a reason why this game rose quite a bit. First off, I played it more than a lot of the other deck builders on this list. And as I did, I realized that this is the perfect hybrid of everything that I want from a deck building game. It has a cool theme of you building an empire. You're actually getting, you're taking lands to build an empire and nominating this princess to take control of that land and then uh, be able to stow cards there to get them out of your deck. So it's blending the theme together with the mechanisms. It has both a mix of Ascension and Dominion style uh, deck building going on where you have a somewhat changing row of cards, but you'll have multiples of the same card. It's kind of complicated to explain how that works. But then you also have victory point cards that you buy as well and deciding how to or when to make that pivot to uh, padding out your deck with action cards and then uh, using those to get the victory Victory point cards at the same time trying to get the cards out of your deck into the kingdom it just works so well it's like a, a puzzly brain burning thing but at the same time it just feels very smooth to me it has this really cool action system where it's like arrows on the cards where you play a card and then it's if a, if a card has an arrow on it you can play a card that will uh, that matches up with that arrow and then you can just build a chain of cards which i just think is another really interesting uh new mechanism that i hadn't seen in any other deck building game to that point i love the anime style artwork it's just wonderful right now i'm pe- uh, playing with pasted up versions but as soon as that official english language version comes out with hopefully all of the different expansions coming along with it eventually Oh man, I mean, this is just an amazing deck building game. I don't see it moving out of this spot anytime soon, but who knows what the future will bring. For now though, Heart of Crown is a fantastic game and I cannot wait until more people get to experience and I'm glad that I was on the forefront of championing it. Championing it. <laughs> that is Heart of Crown, soon to be released from Japanime Games and now from a company called Flip Flops over in Japan. My number one deck building game of all time. All right, well, that's the list. And before we get to my closing thoughts, let me just run through last year's list just to give you a little explanation as to why things moved the way that they did, why they fell off the list, and so on and so forth. Last year, my number 10 was Puzzle Strike from Serlin Games. Now, I still think that that's a wonderful game, but honestly, it just wasn't getting played enough, which is something you're going to hear me say about a lot of the games that fell off the list or got moved around. But also, there's new additions of the game, which make me feel like, oh, I probably shouldn't be playing with the old rules and the old chips, and I want to get the new edition of some point and that just hasn't happened there's also puzzle strike shadows which i never tried so i kind of just feel like out of the loop on that one and that's part of the reason why it fell off but i am definitely going to make a concerted effort to get one of the new additions played and then who knows maybe you'll see it back on the list at some point uh then we have rune age and again this is a game that i just have not had a chance to get to the table yet despite the fact that i have the uh the one and only expansion for it that i really want to try out um it's a wonderful game different game modes you can do it competitively cooperatively there's different scenarios you can set up I, they really put a lot of game into a very small box and i'm sorry that it doesn't get more support which is another reason why i'm kind of like i don't know how much i want to invest myself in really loving this game um i guess that's a cult of the new type thing of wanting expansions all the time but it is a really solid game, and you can usually find it very cheap. I urge you to get it if you can. Uh, then uh, High Command, which was on this year's list, it actually it was number eight last year. It rose up to number six. I just love that game, and it's just getting better. And I want to try the variant to um, to that will hopefully make it even better. And I wouldn't be surprised if this moves up even higher on the list next year. Stay tuned. My number seven was Shadow Rift, and that fell off the list altogether. Shadow Rift is really a fantastic thematic game. Uh, probably the most, one of the most thematic deck builders I've ever played, or one of the most thematic games, period, that I've ever played. Um, as far as defending the city from oncoming hordes of monsters, your fantasy heroes, you can either build magical walls around the city or just defeat and seal the Shadow Rifts. Really, really cool. The rules for the first edition were horrible horrible just horrible 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 the components left a lot uh to desire so it was really hard for me to get this to the table i'd bust it out and people were like "Eh." now there is a new edition of the game coming out and there was some controversy going on with that as i mentioned in my kickstarter update but still i'm looking forward to getting it so again who knows there's a very good possibility this will jump back onto the list at a later point uh my number six last year was heart of crown that rose up to number one five spots that's how much i love that game i think when i did my list the last time i'd only played it once or twice 
and was just like completely enamored with it enough to throw it onto the list at number six. But this year I've had more time with it. I've tried a couple of the smaller expansions. Oh boy, it's so good. Uh, but number five last year was Trains. That fell five spots back to number 10. That's a victim of, you know, not playing it as much. But also I was kind of like really thrilled for the Rising Sun expansion. And it left me just like, huh feels like the same game doesn't feel like as good as i wanted it to be but it's still a solid solid game and i probably played it the most out of um well okay let me i contradict myself a little bit i haven't played it as much in like the last four or five months but when i when like especially when around the time that the rising sun expansion came out and earlier in the year because i had it on my list of like 10 games i wanted to play 10 times in um 2014 i was playing it a lot i actually think i almost came close to finishing the 10 games i needed for that and maybe that's part of the reason why it's fell further this year is because i played it so much for a short period of time and kind of got burned down on it but it is still a solid game uh my number four last year was legendary that rose up to number two fantastic the secret wars expansion is still fresh in my mind and they've now announced uh secret wars volume two. Oh, i can't wait for that uh my number three last year was Tonto Quarry. It fell two spots to number five. I wouldn't read too much into that. It's still a solid, solid game. I just liked other stuff better than it. That's all. Uh, my number two was Ascension. That's another huge dropper. That fell back to number seven. And a lot of that is, uh, I'll be honest, the app really kills a lot of the desire for me to play that in person, especially because games of Ascension can go on a long time if you're playing with three or four players. Um, and I just love the app. It's just a lot of fun. So I don't know. I just don't consider, if I'm playing a game primarily through the app, it kind of drops in its estimation to me as a physical game. But that's no knock against the game itself, really, because it's still a fantastic and fun game. And I'm telling you, the latest expansion for that game have been just stellar rise of vigil um something of dark darkness unleashed um dawn of champions and uh, what's the other one realms unraveled any one of those sets is fantastic and the artwork is so much better i can't believe how much of a turnaround they've done in that game so there's that and my number one last year of course was thunderstone advance and that fell back to number three it's a victim of not being able to play it as much, and the reason for that is because it is so long. We played a couple of games in that in the past year that uh, with new people that just dragged on for hours, and uh, it is a big problem with that game, which is a shame because, again, I love the mechanisms and I love the theme of it. I just wish that it could be knocked out in a quicker amount of time. I sound like a broken record about that sometimes. But hey, no one wants to sit, unless you're really delving into a Twilight Imperium-like game, people expect a card game just to go by faster. And um, I, you know, I doubt that they will ever do another edition of Thunderstone, but if they did, hopefully they would streamline it quite a bit. So anyways, that is the list and that is the recap of last year's list. As usual, I want to hear what you think. What are notable omissions that I had to the list? I know one of them is Dominion, uh, which again, I actually like Dominion way more this year and got back into Dominion because of the latest expansion. But there's just so many other deck builders that I love more than that. And what else do you think I might have left off the list? Of course, let me know. Tell me what your favorites are. Tell me um, any feedback, advice, things that I missed that you think I should definitely try. Some obscure hidden gems. There's definitely a lot of other games on my list that I want to play and try. There's only so many hours in the day. But who knows what the future holds for this list. I hope to do one every year, assuming that it changes enough for that to be warranted. Because I love deck building games. And hopefully you do too. Thank you so much. Take care.